Welcome to Inspirational Journeys, everyone. My name is Ann Harrison Barnes, and today <clears throat> I have the pleasure of speaking with Sean Smucker, author of the Day the Angels Fell series, which is this book, These Nameless Things, is coming out pretty soon. And he's also a podcaster. So welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Sean, if I can get my words out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me, Ann. This is great. Oh, boy. Um, and, I, and I also want to send a special shout out to Karen Steele, publicist at Baker Publishing, for getting us connected. <laughs> yes, definitely. Okay, so tell listeners a little bit about yourself, because nobody can tell your story better than you can. Okay, well, I live in a small city of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. If you hear sirens in the background, that's why we're right on the, the route to the hospital here. Um, my wife and I live here with our six kids. I'm a co-writer and a ghostwriter by day and a novelist sort of by night. Um, I've been writing full-time for other people for about 10 years. And then about four years ago, my first novel came out, the YA title, The Day the Angels Fell, and the sequel, The Edge of Over There. Last year, I um, had a novel come out, Light from Distant Stars. And then uh, on June 30th of this year, These Nameless Things comes out. Ooh, and I've already started. I don't know. I mean, no, I haven't gotten These Nameless Things yet, but I already started The Day the Angels Fell. And let me tell you, you captivate your reader. Oh, well, thank you. You're pulling me in, and, and I don't want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear that. I love it. Okay, so what inspired you to become a writer? Well, you know, when I was just a little boy, um, I lived on a farmhouse. I have three sisters, and my dad wasn't a farmer, but we rented half of a farmhouse that we lived in. And when I was in Sunday school one morning, I was probably eight or nine years old, uh, our teacher read the first chapter to us from The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And that just immediately captured my imagination. I had never, I mean, my parents read to me a lot when I was a kid, but I, I had never even imagined a story so captivating and uh, so compelling. And so I immediately asked my parents if they would buy me that series. And I still have the little box set um, that they bought me, you know, what was that, 30, 35 years ago wow. or so. Um, and on the top, the price is written, you know, it was like, 10 bucks or something for the whole set. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, I know. Right. And, <laughs> and, you know, when I read those books, they just, they really just drew me in. And so from there, I went to all kinds of different, different books and stories that I loved. And as I got a little bit older, I started to really want to do that. You know, I wanted to make other people feel the same way that I felt when I read those stories. And uh, that's really what got me into writing. You sound like me. Reading got me into writing too, but yeah. anyway. Um, so what did you what, read? What did you read? Oh gosh, I read everything from my favorite one, and you would be surprised. My favorite book when I was five was King Emmett's Pig. I've had people, my my parents, my cousins read to me before that. Then I got King Emmett's Pig, couldn't put it down. And I've read mysteries and thrillers, a bit of Stephen King. I've read, I mean, Lord forgive me nice, for that, yeah. but. Yeah. I've read a little bit of everything, some some weird things, but now my thing is, and I've even read my share of historical romances, which I finally got sick of, but my <laughs> thing right now is mysteries, um, Christian mysteries and suspense, and your, <clears throat> your books kind of, because I'm, I'm working on a story, I'm rebranding re, re it due to some issues I had with when I got it originally published, but your your stories kind of are very similar to the way I'm writing mine. So mm. that's kind of what drew me. And when I read, and when I saw on, on your website and your bio that you write the supernatural, I'm like, oh yeah, this is what I, this is what I like. And then I, <laughs> and then I got the audio books and just started the day the angels fell yesterday. Yeah, well, I love the, the audio books are amazing mostly because I love the reader, Adam Verner, who's a, who's a friend of mine now. So he's, oh, wow. he's read um, all four of my novels, I believe. And um, I just, I love his voice. I love the way that he, he reads the characters. And, and so, yeah, I'm glad to hear that you're listening to those. Oh yeah. Um, are you going to get 
is nameless things going to be put are these nameless things going to be put in audible or in audio yep, it is yep it'll be available in audible usually they show up there about a week before release so that should be coming up soon oh good i'm gonna get that one <laughs> <laughs> yep so what inspired the paranormal the, not paranormal i'm sorry supernatural fiction well you know i think um my stories are are normally based very much in reality, but but there are elements of magical realism or 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 supernatural elements that, and I think they came in because just as a kid and even you know even now as an adult, I was always sort of curious about what happens in the margins of our imagination. You know, we have these things that we know are real, but then there are always the legends or the stories or the things that are kind of on the edge of reality. And, and, and that's where I've always been drawn as a storyteller um, into those, into those sort of marginal elements and, you know, the things that make us wonder, wait, could that be real? Is that true? The Did that really happen? Yeah. The, the unseen. So, um, mm -hmm. so I think it's just my curiosity uh, in that, in that, direction that that has drawn me to write those those types of stories wow so tell me about your podcast i found that yesterday and i subscribed yeah sure it's called the stories between us my wife is also a writer and so we decided to start a podcast where we just talk about um creativity and writing and and you know how how we do that within the confines of a household and a family and and normal life and so um you know, we have a lot of guests. We, we typically try to post podcasts on Tuesday and Friday. Um, Tuesdays are generally the two of us talking. Fridays are usually an interview with another writer, creative person. And so, yeah, it's been going really well. We have a lot of fun with it. Um, we're certainly not professional podcasters, but uh, we enjoy talking about writing. And it's something that we talk about all the time anyway so we just thought well we might as well just record our conversations and and maybe people will benefit from them there you go got inspired right because <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how long have you been podcasting uh we started in about october i think of last year oh wow honestly i started mine in april of last year oh nice cool yep and I love it. And, and it's, it's been fun ever since I had a friend of mine who encouraged me to start mine. And well, I've been praying about it and, and she encouraged me to start mine and I've been having fun and meeting new people ever since. Yeah. It's really fun. Isn't it? Just kind of mm -hmm. seeing where everybody's at and you realize that behind the names that you read about or the books that you read are just real people who are trying to go about life and create something beautiful. And, and so it's really fun. I found to, to chat with those folks. Yeah. And honestly, I like, like if authors have a podcast I like listening to that as, uh, you know I may listen to see if it's subject matter that I'm interested in but I also like to listen because that way I get the author's voice in my head you know yeah yeah so when I saw that I'm like oh I'm gonna like this because I'm a podcast junkie I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather listen to podcasts and and audiobooks and have my echo dot read my kindles than watch tv I mean, <laughs> <Right>. really <laughs> you know because there's too much bad stuff going on. I got to try to keep it as positive mm. as I can. Yeah. So are you, tell me about your process. Do you plot your novels or are you a pantser or uh, some people call it a planter? <laughs> I'm somewhere in between. Yeah. I would say I'm somewhere in between. Normally I start a, I start a story with a character idea. Um, so there's a character in my mind who is in the middle of some kind of an interesting scene or interesting to me anyway and I write that out for maybe 15 to 20,000 words but normally by the time I get to that point I like to sit down and and sort of arrange things out at least have a climax that I'm shooting for um, I used to you know 10 15 20 years ago when I would write fiction I, I tended to just kind of get lost in the weeds I would start writing but then the, the idea tended to just kind of peter out and i got frustrated with that process and i realized that i still like the the flying by the seat of my pants idea um and so i do that in the beginning but i've also realized that it's really helpful for me to have something to shoot for so once i get to that i don't know maybe a quarter of the way into the book uh 20 percent of the way in i try and figure out a general direction that the story is going to go and i don't always stick to that but at least gives me a path to to lean into 
Mm-hmm. You'd let you sound like me. You bare bones plot. Like mm-hmm. I do. Yeah. I've, I used yeah. to be a pantser, a true pantser, but I will start planning and my characters will take me in directions I never thought possible. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, and that's always the fun part, right? Like when your yeah. character does something that you had no idea was going to happen or a new character introduces themselves and you're like, wow, where did that person come from? Um, that's, yeah. That's usually the, I, I really enjoy that. Are you, or your character wakes you up at four o'clock in the morning one morning to say, I need you to let me tell my story. Because that's <laughs> exactly. what happened to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So definitely. So do you have any advice for aspiring authors? Well, there's usually a couple of things that I, that I say if people ask me that. I mean, the first thing that I always recommend is get into a, a regular routine of writing. And I, you know, if you can do it every day, I think that's wonderful. Some people struggle with that idea, but I really think it's so important to be in the piece that you're writing on a regular basis. Um, you know, without taking big breaks, big gaps. I mean, I think it's good to take a big a big break between drafts. So you finish the first draft, then take some time off. But while I'm drafting, I really try and stay, stay in the story on a daily basis. Um, the second thing that really changed things for me was when I committed to finishing the things that I had started. Uh, I used to be in the habit of starting new ideas all the time. I mean, you know, every month I'd have a new idea and I'd start it. I'd start another book, start another book. But things didn't really change for me. I didn't really make much progress in my career as a writer until I started just committing to finishing things. So that meant I had to be a little bit more selective about the stories that I started. I had to make sure that it was something that I was truly interested in and something that would take me, you know, that I was willing to commit to for the long haul. But um, The Day the Angels Fell was really one of the first novels that I ever actually finished, you know, and followed through and, 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 completed the various drafts for and and it just made such a big difference it, it boosted my confidence it um, helped me to become a little bit more familiar with the middle which I think is hard to write sometimes in a novel when you get to that 40 50 60 thousand word mark it it can it can be difficult sometimes to kind of follow that through and then also to write a good ending so write regularly commit to finishing things and i think you know for most of us writers when we can do those things i think we'll start to see some progress in in our writing yeah so i noticed that you wrote a memoir i haven't read that one yet can you kind of tell us a little bit about that yeah once we were strangers that was a book that i wrote a few years ago about um a friendship that i struck up with a syrian refugee who lived here in in the city Uh, in the same city as me. We crossed paths as he was uh, just entering into our community and we became friends. Our families became friends with one another. And, you know, I started writing that book with one vision in mind. I just wanted to, I wanted people to know his story about how he got here to the States. And so I kind of envisioned that it would be a story about uh, escape, you know, from Syria and, and this sort of exciting journey that he had to the U S and that ended up becoming part of the book, but really the primary angle that the book ended up taking was just a book about friendship and a book about, um, coming along someone who was actually very much like me, you know, and just becoming friends and, and doing life together. And so it's a real, it's a special book to me. Muhammad is and became a good friend of mine since they've moved to Michigan. So I don't see him or stay in touch with him as much as I'd like, but we still text from time to time. And, you know, he, he really changed my view of immigrants. He changed my view of people seeking asylum here. And I wanted to share his story and our friendship um, with everybody. So that's, that's once we were strangers. Oh, wow. Okay. So can you tell us about these nameless things. Yeah, these nameless things is a book about a man named Dan, who, um, as the, as the story starts, you realize that he's escaped from some pretty horrific things that were happening in a mountain, and he set up camp in a small village just outside the mountain where he's kind of made a home for himself, and he has some friends there in the village. And the main reason he stopped in that village just outside the mountain is that he's waiting for his brother, who is who is still stuck, still captured in the mountain. Um, But as he waits for his brother, he starts to realize as the book progresses that everyone else in the village is also waiting for his brother. 
um, for reasons of their own. And so um, he has to decide, is he going to go back for his brother? Is he going to continue to wait? And it's really a story about, um, about finding the truth. It's a story about memory and death and forgiveness. Um, and Dan, uh, Dan really has to come to terms with some lies that he's been telling himself and he has to, yeah, he has to, he has to come to terms with his past. Um, is it part of the angels that fell series? No, it's not. So okay. the day the angels fell and then the follow up, the edge of over there are two books of a trilogy. The third book has not yet been written. Um, and then light from distant stars and these nameless things are standalone novels for adults. Oh, okay. Okay, because I, I mean, the day the angels filled, yeah, uh, my tongue doesn't want to uh, get around that for some reason. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you know how it goes, right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Especially when you're right in the middle of something and you don't say it right. Anyway, because um, I was wondering about that. I thought I, I saw that, and but I but the 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 day the angels fell, you you have to read those in order, right? Yes, I mean. Yes, it, it would be very helpful if you did. Yeah, especially because you get to meet Sam, and then I think in the sample of the net of the edge of over there, uh, you meet Abra. Yeah, Abra becomes much more of a main player in the second book. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so where can people find you online? Um, I have a website, seansmucker.com, spelled S-H-A-W-N-S-M-U-C-K-E-R.com. Uh, you can find me at Twitter under the same name, Sean Smucker, Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah, and all of my books are, are, are easily found wherever you buy books. Okay. Um, do you have any questions for me? Yeah, well, I was going to ask you how long you've been podcasting, but you already answered that one. Where are you based at? I'm in I'm in Georgia. Oh, okay, nice. Which part? Yeah, I'm I'm in South Central. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, I'm not in the big city. I love small town life. Yeah, is that where you grew up? Yes, I lived in the big cities before, but I like small town life. I I grew up here. I like sitting out on my steps to brainstorm. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I know that music and writing are such a connection for me. Do you mm. like to listen to music when you write or? Yes, I do. I do. Most of the time I'll make a playlist of some sort, uh, for each book that I'm writing. And then I always listen to that playlist. I find it helps me kind of pick up the threads and, and get into a particular state of mind for each book. So I do. I love listening to music while I write. That sounds like me. Have you ever gotten like stuck in a book and a song gets stuck in your head and you know what's got something to do with the book, but you can't figure it out? No, I have not. That sounds that interesting. That happens to me <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. And then I'll, when, I, when I sit on my steps, I like to listen to the wind chimes. Yeah. What kind of music do you listen to, Anne? I listen when I'm writing, um, when I'm draft, doing my first draft, I will listen to classical music or other instrumental stuff, but nice. when I'm editing, um, sometimes, like when I'm doing my blog posts, I will do, uh, um, sometimes it's soft classical music, sometimes, excuse me, sometimes not. When I'm editing, okay. I won't, yeah. I'll be sitting there and not listening to music at all because Sometimes music, even instrumental, can sometimes distract me yeah, when I'm yeah, in yeah, the rewriting yeah. phase. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so do you have a favorite Bible verse you would like to share with us? Oh, man. Put me on the spot. I'm sorry. Well, I should have warned you. No, <laughs> no I, my favorite... Um, my favorite scripture passage is in Ezekiel... I think it's chapter six, but I'd have to double check that. And it's basically this story where Ezekiel is, um, you know, he's seeing this really strange vision. And as he's, as he's standing there, uh, God says that he's going to put together this team of basically destroyers who are going to go through the city and destroy everything and everyone that was that had that had 
started to act against God um, and, and were doing all these horrific things. But just before these destroyers go through, um, God introduces to Ezekiel this man, and he's described as a man clothed in linen with writing equipment at his side. And this man with the writing equipment is directed to go through the city and mark on the foreheads of all those who are to be set aside and not destroyed. And I've always found that so interesting that, um, you know, even in the midst of this horrific scene of destruction, that someone with writing equipment was the one who was sent in to mark, to set aside those, you know, who were to be saved from this hor horrible thing that was about to happen. And Wow. Um, so yeah, take a look at it if you get a chance. I'm pretty sure it's Ezekiel 6, but it's right around there if I didn't get, get the chapter right. And it, it's okay. just a story that, that has always had a big impact on me. I will definitely look that up later. Okay, so would you like to close this out in prayer? Sure. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we've had together. I thank you for Anne and the work that she's doing. I pray that you would go before her and that you would give her wisdom about uh, what she's to write, what she's to say, and that you would bless the work that she does. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we challenge you today to go out there and read to get inspired, write something inspiring, and share your story, your creation with the world. Thanks for listening to Inspirational Journeys, stories that matter, because your story matters. Have a blessed day.